Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We welcome all of you, members and guests, members of Beautiful Savior, guests listening to us on this, our video 
worship service as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. And we pray to our gracious God this morning that it will not be uh, too long yet before we will all be able to gather together and personally and physically and spiritually greet each other with the peace of the Lord. Until then, the peace of the Lord be with you all. We begin our service uh, today by singing hymn number 463, Christ the Lord is risen today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Your right hand, O Lord, glorious in power, your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. You have led in your steadfast love the people whom you have redeemed. You have guided them by your strength to your holy abode. You will bring them in and plant them on your own mountain, the place, O Lord, which you have made for your abode, the sanctuary, O Lord, which your hands have established. The Lord will reign forever and ever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. Even on this joyous day of celebration, let us not forget that we are sinful. People who do not deserve the precious gift of salvation that God has given us in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we approach you today with mixed emotions. We are filled with sorrow for our sin, yet we are overwhelmed with the joy of forgiveness. We confess that we have not lived up to your expectations. We have sinned in our thoughts, by our words, and with our actions. For the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, forgive us all our sins and show us your mercy and love. Amen. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, the Father, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and open the gate of everlasting life to us. Grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of our Lord's resurrection may be raised from death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
The first reading for this, the festival of the resurrection of our Lord, is from the book of Acts, chapter 10. Then Peter said, Now I understand that God doesn't play favorites. Rather, whoever respects God and does what is right is acceptable to him in any nation. God sent his word to the people of Israel and brought them the good news of peace through Jesus Christ. This Jesus Christ is everyone's Lord. You know what happened throughout Judea. Everything began in Galilee after John spread the news about baptism. You know that God anointed Jesus from Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Jesus went everywhere and did good things, such as healing everyone who was under the devil's power. Jesus did these things because God was with him. We can testify to everything Jesus did in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem. People hung him on a cross and killed him. But God brought him back to life on the third day. God didn't show him to all the people. He showed Jesus to witnesses, apostles he had already chosen. We apostles are those men who ate and drank with Jesus after he came back to life. He ordered us to warn the people. God has appointed Jesus to judge the living and the dead. In addition, all the prophets testify that people who believe in the one named Jesus receive forgiveness for their sins through him. This is the Old Testament reading. The second reading for this, the festival of the resurrection of our Lord, is from St. Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter 3. Since you were brought back to life with Christ, focus on the things that are above, where Christ holds the highest position. Keep your mind on things above, not on worldly things. You have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life, appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. This is the second reading. And the gospel for this, the festival of the resurrection of our Lord, is from St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28, which also serves as the basis for our message this, this morning. After the day of worship, as the sun rose Sunday morning, Mary from Magdala and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. Suddenly there was a powerful earthquake. An angel of the Lord had come down from heaven, rolled the stone away, and was sitting on it. He was as bright as lightning, and his clothes were as white as snow. The guards were so deathly afraid of him that they shook. The angel said to the women, Don't be afraid. I know you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He's not here. He has been brought back to life, as he said. Come, see the place where he was lying. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has been brought back to life. He's going ahead of them into Galilee. There they will see him. Take note that I have told you. They hurried away from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and greeted them. They went up to him, bowed down to worship him, and took hold of his feet. Then Jesus said to them, Don't be afraid. Go, tell my followers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the gospel of the Lord. We continue by singing the hymn, I Know That My Redeemer Lives.
Gives and grants me Grace be to you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God upon which we base our message on this, the festival of the resurrection of our Lord, again is the gospel for today. You heard it read before from Matthew chapter 28. I recall just these words. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He's not here. He has been brought back to life as he said. Come, see the place where he was lying. In the name of our resurrected resurrected Lord Jesus Christ, dear Christian friends, Easter can be a day full of surprises, especially for the kids. If you hide the Easter eggs, then it's a surprise for the kids when they hunt for them uh, around the house and uh, find them in odd places. It's kind of a special surprise when the uh, kids also have those plastic Easter eggs and you open them up and there's a surprise in there, candy or some little trinket. I remember one uh, Easter, my mom and dad surprised the whole family by making lamb for dinner. We had never had it before. It was the Easter surprise. But my all-time favorite Easter surprise was the Easter of 1982. It was uh, during Holy Week, and my wife was extremely pregnant with our last child. And, of course, I was nervous. I didn't have an associate uh, with working with me in the congregation, so I said to my wife on Monday of Holy Week, please don't have the baby on Monday, Thursday. I don't know what I'm going to do. So Monday, Thursday came, and there was no baby. And I said, thank you for not having the baby on Monday, Thursday. But please don't have the baby on Good Friday. I don't know what I would do. So Good Friday came, and went, and I said, thank you for not having the baby on Good Friday, but please don't have the baby on Easter Sunday, because I don't know what I would do. So Easter Sunday came, and we got up early for the sunrise service, and we went to Easter breakfast, and my wife sang in the choir, and we went to two services, and the services were over, and I believe we had uh, a dinner with our relatives, and we were tired, and we came home, And it was 10.30, and we were going to go to bed at maybe 11 o'clock, and I said to my wife, thank you so much for not having the baby today. And she said, don't go to bed. We have to go to the hospital. What an Easter surprise. A son was born, Nathan. An Easter surprise. In fact, even today, his older sisters uh, still say that whenever they smell Easter lilies, it reminds them of Nathan's homecoming. Shortly after Easter, what a surprise. 
This morning, we want to take a look uh, by way of Matthew 28 into the very first Easter, and we want to see who was surprised and what the surprise was. And I'll give you a little hint. There was more than one surprise. Matthew 28 looks in on several women disciples of Jesus hurrying to a garden cemetery. That's where Jesus was buried after his crucifixion and his death. He had been buried in a cave tomb. A huge stone was rolled uh, in the entranceway. A Roman garrison was uh, provided for security. The governor's seal was put on that stone. And the women were rushing to the tomb on that first Easter Sunday because they hadn't really finished wrapping Jesus' body. They had done it very uh, hurriedly on Friday, but then uh, they couldn't uh, do anything because Saturday was a Sabbath. And so they were coming back to wrap the body of Jesus. These ladies were just the first in a series of disciples on that first Easter morning who were looking for a dead man. Because everybody knows that when people die, they stay dead. But it was on the way to the cemetery that it finally dawned on the women who was going to roll away the stone. I mean, that was a huge stone. They didn't have enough muscle power. What were they going to do? And then the first Easter surprise. The tomb was open. An angel as brilliant as the sun was sitting on the stone. The angel had caused an earthquake to open that tomb. It totally freaked out that garrison of Roman soldiers so that they went unconscious. And when they got up, they went running into town to tell the chief priests, the religious leaders, uh, what they had seen. And the religious leaders bribed them and said, well, you tell uh, people when they ask that the disciples stole his body. I think that the earthquake and the angel deserve a little explanation because, first of all, the stone to the entrance of the tomb was not a big boulder. Rather, it was a huge cut stone. It was a round cylinder like a wheel. And when rolled into the front of the entrance to to the tomb, it would fell into a ditch or a trench so that you needed many men to remove it. When the angel caused that earthquake, it blew that cylinder slab out of the ditch, away from the tomb. And the angel was sitting on that wheel stone, which was now lying flat. I don't know what that earthquake measured on the uh, Richter scale. You know, of course, we modern scientific uh, people, we explain away earthquakes by saying that uh, they're caused by friction between tectonic plates. They finally shift. Fault lines move. But in the Bible, when there were major earthquakes, it because it was God speaking. At creation, there was an earthquake Global continents were uplifted. The ocean floor was depressed as the foundations of the earth were established. And God was speaking by that earthquake. He was saying, let there be, and there was. And then there was the universal flood that covered the whole world. Noah and his family got into the ark. There was an earthquake there too. Existing seabeds were torn apart. The earth broke open. There were tidal waves and tsunamis. God was speaking and he was saying, I punish sin and unbelief. And then there was Moses on Mount Sinai receiving the Ten Commandments. And it says that smoke arose and the whole mountain shook violently. God was speaking to the people, I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods. And then God's people were settling into the promised land. And every once in a while, they needed a little help and a, uh, now and again from God to defeat their enemies. First Samuel chapter 14 says, The raiding party also trembled in fear. The earth shook, and there was panic sent from God. 
God was saying to the people by that earthquake, this is my land for my people. And then our Lord's crucifixion. Then Jesus loudly cried out once again and gave up his life. Suddenly the curtain in the temple was split in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split open. God was speaking once again through that earthquake. Justice and punishment for sin is now exacted. And now the resurrection and earthquake. You know, God does not do something really, really big without emphasizing it with an earthquake. And so there it was, an earthquake at the crucifixion, an earthquake at the resurrection. It was sort of like God was tying those two events tightly together with a seismic knot. Why an earthquake by an angel? Why, of course, to make sure that the stone had been rolled away. But not to let Jesus out, rather to let people in. So that people could get in because God wanted his disciples to witness an empty tomb. What an Easter surprise. Because you see, on that very first Easter, there were no believers in a resurrection Everyone was looking for a stiff dead man, still in the tomb. But at the very first millisecond of Sunday morning, Jesus' body translated, evaporated out of that tomb. Time and space could no longer contain him. With a glorified body, he could go anywhere and any place, any time he wanted. And you know that earthquake on that first Easter morning was an earthquake that was felt around the world. Because the angel that was sitting there on the stone was not sitting there quietly. He said something. He said to the ladies, he's not here. He has risen, as he said. Now go and tell. And so that earthquake was felt around the world. For centuries, changing lives, destroying death, changing the course of human history and even eternity. And it all started out with just a few women at the tomb who spread the message to some disciples, then to Jerusalem, then to Judea, then to Samaria, all the way through the world to your baptism. What resurrection earthquakes are you still feeling today in your life? What resurrection earthquakes are you causing to happen through your testimony to others? And then the second big Easter surprise. Jesus himself. And he reiterated the message that the angel uh, had had told to the ladies, go and tell. Do not be afraid. And so the ladies heard and they saw and they touched and that was empirical evidence and this was not an apparition. Jesus rose bodily from the grave to give us those three major resurrection truths. Number one, in his spiritual body, he was declared to be the Son of God. This was shown in a powerful way by his resurrection. Number two, St. Paul to the Romans. Jesus our Lord was handed over for our sins, but was raised again for our justification. Debt paid. And finally from John, Jesus promises, because I live you shall live also. You know, before Jesus died and rose again, he predicted some other surprises, some other earthquakes, where God would be speaking. Matthew 24 and again in Luke. Jesus says, before the end of time, there will be famines 
and earthquakes and pestilence. And a lot of those will go unpredicted, humanly speaking, and they will come upon us as total surprises. And in all of those things, God once again will be speaking, this is not your lasting home. Do not get too comfortable here. Be prepared for Jesus' return by keeping him as the first love of your life. Because, you see, there's going to be one final earthquake. And it's going to be a big surprise. And you will not know when it's coming, but come it will. Revelation chapter 16. A powerful earthquake struck. The sun turned black. The moon turned red. Stars fell from the sky. The sky vanished like a scroll being rolled up. God will be speaking in that final earthquake, and he will be saying, now is the time of judgment for all mankind. And when that day comes, you and I will be surprised, but we will not be surprised about the outcome. Because you see, right now, you are safe in Christ. And at that final earthquake, all you have to do is look up because your redemption is drawing near. Hebrews tells us, Once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the sky. Psalm 46, That is why we are not afraid, even when the earth shakes and the mountains topple into the depths of the sea. That day will come as a big surprise, known only to God. But for those people faithful to the Savior, there will be no surprises about their eternal destination. Because Scripture says, we shall meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we be with the Lord forever. How do you know that for sure? Because you believe in Easter surprises, an empty tomb, and a risen Lord. What do you believe? Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And that's a guarantee for you too. Alleluia. Amen. We confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For the church and her leaders, for pastors and teachers, for all who share the good news of our resurrected Lord, that you would empower their witness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our national, state, and local leaders, that you would guide and direct them to govern according to your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who suffer from want, and who lack the basic necessities of life, that you would provide for them as you do for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who have lost faith in Jesus, that through the influence of the Holy Spirit and the witness of Christians they might believe again. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray. 
trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we join together in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. 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 The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Let us go forth in peace, in the name of the risen Lord. Amen. Life is